Hey everybody, welcome back to This is the Police 2. We're heading into November 23rd. So let's rock and roll. I, uh... Did I miss something? No, no. I just want to move into the office where you were working yesterday. So you, uh... You're moving into a smaller office? I'm moving where I'm more comfortable. That's the office I used to share with Gail. It's... Ah. Yeah, it's probably too big for me. But it'll be just right for you. Um, uh, can I help? No, no, I, I don't like people pawing my stuff. You could get a bite to eat. I'll be finished in, like, 20 minutes. I can handle this. At least I can handle this. <laughs> okay, when she gets I, caught uh, for doing this? I'll go down to the dining hall, then. Call me if you need me. This is gonna backfire hard on her. Ah, Mr. Nash. Glad we have a chance to get acquainted again. This time under better circumstances, huh? <laughs> our first meeting didn't go so smooth. <laughs> this is like the crazy cop that held the gun to our you head. really must forgive me, Mr. Nash, for being so rude to you. It was rude of me to arrest you. <laughs> you gotta admit, you don't really look like an undercover cop. Am I right, guys? <laughs> But I didn't hit you too Nobody hard. says anything. I tried to be... I tried to be delicate with elderly gentlemen. I'm not some kind of monster. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend anyone. You really shouldn't be offended. We're all grown-ups here. Why be offended? Why are you offended, Mr. Nash? I gotta say, I expect more from a senior police officer. Well, I don't know. More... more professionalism, you know? You seem like the kind of guy who sits behind a desk doing paperwork. Am I right, Mr. Nash? That the bathroom? Weren't you gonna drink your coffee, Mr. Nash? You're not incontinent, are you? Mr. Nash, do you have- Holy oh, Charlie. Is it an age thing, or did I just hit you too hard in the kidneys? If that's the problem, then I apologize, Mr. Nash. I tried. I tried not to hit any vital organs. Uh oh. Is that a mop? That's awesome. I mean, he deserves it. I I don't feel one ounce of sadness. Okay, time to work. Let's go. Mustard didn't come into work today. Is that right, Mustard? Thanks for that. Meridian drank too much. Can't hold it together. Great. Mizuka, after light, last night's snowstorm, my roof started to leak. Got water coming down in two rooms like it's pouring out of a bucket. Even the TV got wrecked. I'd like to stay home and fix the roof. Okay, we're gonna... So... <laughs> Alright. Fine. Stay home. Penkin. I don't know who this guy is. Yesterday I had a great trip to Ripton. Thanks for letting me go. The guitar specialist was a real master. Now our axes are roaring like true stadium masters. Unfortunately, our drummer Lenny lost his sticks during the trip. And these were special sticks. Cars from a Garensburg Black Oak. He made them himself. Can you imagine? Anyway, we need to go out into the woods, find the right kind of oak, cut it down, cut enough sticks that Lenny can throw them off the stage and not be all cheap about it. So I have to manage without me for tomorrow, but... <laughs> for now, but tomorrow I'll work a double shift. So this guy, I guess he's a cop, but... He, has, he didn't come to work the first day. He had to, he had an excuse. Now he has another excuse. <laughs> I don't know if we're ever going to see this guy. But all right. Okay, so today's shift, we got six cops. Six. We planned for eight, I think. The two that called in sick. And uh, that other guy, I don't even think he was an option. But whatever. He'll show up one day, maybe. Uh, so what are we lacking here? We're lacking some... We're lacking stealth. We're lacking negotiation. Uh, this is our new guy, Clayton. See what he does. Um, let's go ahead and just auto assign this. Now, people with the strength, with the strength uh, attribute, this impacts their like baton stuff. So I want to make sure that 
anybody that has strength also has a baton, maybe? Oh, but this just, like, clears it out. Okay, that gives her a baton strength. That's fine. At some point, we'll start to learn, like, what should go with what. Um, but let's just rock and roll for now with the auto assigns. Oh, sick tunes. I love that. I love them with some music right Public indecency. You've got a 520 public indecency. A bank of sharp wood. Elderly man wants to take out a loan to kill his wife. For 40 years of marriage, she's been nothing but boring. But you don't even care. You give loans to bloodsuckers all day. He continued arguing with the bank clerk. And when the elderly man was finally denied credit, he made a scene, lowered his pants, to teach the lesson, teach a lesson to the corrupt banking system. Holy moly. Uh, we need 560. So some of these calls are actually going to take, like, a whole bunch of people for us. Uh, I'm trying to see, like, what combinations I could get where I still have, like... You kind of want to ju go just over that amount, I think. Or I could just take my two top guys, but then further cases, if they're anywhere near this, we won't be able to send. Um, but I guess mathematically it's kind of the same either way, right? Because it would be the same argument for this. Alright. We'll send these two and see what happens. Over time, I guess we'll learn strategically, like, who's better to send out. We can also keep in mind their, like, um, fatigue level. The more that we send out, the, uh, more that we send them out, the more tired they'll become. 538 in progress. Okay, the old man trousers down is up on the table, squatting and groaning. I was refused a loan as a regular customer, so I'm ready to make a special deposit. Here it comes, just a second. Jesus Christ. Uh, we have some stealth here. We could sneak up on the guy with Aranovich. Let's maybe try that. Five Got him! Complete. Suck up the pants, this old man, arrest him. Okay, so this is clicking, like, matching the attribute to, like, the action. The one thing I gotta start doing is considering, uh, what could potentially be going down there. You know, and I guess over time we'll learn based on what we're running into. Um, I'm gonna give him an extra point in stealth. So silencer perk. For this, for this mission, your cop's very first shot will be noiseless. These, these perks have gotta be for those tactical missions, right? All right. Benedict Belmont, so Mr. Nash, out behind the station, uh, one of the snow drifts started melting, and the legs of some half-decayed corpse appear. What are we supposed to do? Should we dig him out and search him, or call the guys from the morgue and let him do it? Better make up your mind quick for that corpse like six. No! Get the morgue guys to do it. We're working. Uh, we can wait for this to come down. Uh, Timing-wise... Let's wait for these guys to get home, and then we'll take this call. So we have more options. It's close. Very close. <laughs> Wendy Pierdo, or Pierdo, heard two loud shots in the street, and now she's afraid that bandits will break into her house and kill her and her husband? Uh, we need 900. My god. Uh, can we even? We kind of have to send, like, everybody. And I might as well, because, like, these requirements seem so high. You know, like, Mer Meradian doesn't look like he's going out on any job by himself. So let's see if we can get some experience. Now, I don't know if the experience is split, like, if you get 100 per mission, let's say, and it's split between the two that come. Okay, we have a theft. If the criminal has already disappeared from the scene of a crime, a full investigation will have to be opened. For this kind of job, a cop's speed and accuracy are unlikely to help. You'll need employees with brains. Alright, cool. Is this on a timer? No. Alright. Makes sense. So we could probably wait for these guys to get back, and then... Who's got the highest intelligence? Birch the third, I guess? Probably want to put him on this. Here's the shooting. Oh my god. No gunshots. The two loud backfires came from Mrs. Pierdot's neighbor's moped. He built one that runs on a mixture of alcohol and manure. You seen the price of diesel? My god. False alarm, we sent everybody. 
What a nightmare. And that makes them all tired, too. I guess that'll be another thing, is deciding, like, which ones could be potentially uh, false alarms, because it's a complete waste of time. Jameson Hill. Someone stole a VCR from the Elmer family residence. So we said we were going to send Birch, right? He's our most intelligent. That still leaves us Aranovich to go out on some other cases. Progress. Kindergarten. A woman reports that her baby, along with her stroller, was taken while she was picking up her older son from kindergarten. I literally turned away for a second. I was helping Christopher put on his scarf, and the stroller just disappeared. Okay, so this is... Picked up outside of kindergarten. All right. Can I even... I don't even think we can do it. Look at that. No, we can't do it. We will not be able to send people. This is going to be a real challenge. So what we, what we could have done, I mean, the trade-off is to send somebody like Belmont, who's still intelligent, just slightly less intelligent than Birch, um, but not worth as much, like, professionalism-wise. No one came to the call, suspect escaped. Oh, no. Oh, God. 577 in progress. We got a legal sales of 577 at the uh, Smelly Goose Bar. All right. A bartender complained that an old disabled man is standing near the entrance to his bar selling homemade alcohol. Be careful with him. I think he's only pretending to be crippled, said the bartender. All right. Uh, I don't think we can just send these dudes. We're not going to have quite enough. Maybe sending a drunk would be a good idea. <laughs> Let's go... Uh... Can we get enough here? No. If I go Clayton? Let's do that. Moranovich, Clayton, Moradian. I like that it seems to be introducing us to, like, basic cases. Like, we've got old ladies, we've got drunk guys, whatever. Eventually, it'll be, like, murders and crazy shit. Okay. Vigil Birch III interrogated some of the witnesses and prepared a preliminary report of... <laughs> the secret of the pink chewing gum. Open investigation. What do we got? You don't have enough information right now to reconstruct the sequence of events and figure out who committed the crime. In the morning, you can instruct any of your subordinates to continue the investigation. Okay. What's the issue? Someone stole a VCR from the Elmer family residence. Here it is, under the TV. Here it is, gone. Empty shelf. Okay. Two suspects. We have schoolboy. Tommy Moore, along with the other boys, leaves Elmer's house. Puts the video in his backpack, or the VCR in the backpack. He and his friends are sitting on the floor watching a movie. Okay. And, or a plumber. Luke Hibbert hits the owner of the house in the head with a wrench. The owner of the house lets the plumber, Luke Hibbert, into the house. All right. Deep under the shelf where the video player was, someone stuck a wad of pink chewing gum. Deep under the shelf where the video player was. This could be old gum, no? Could be. The offender took the video recorder but left the wires that connected to the TV. Perhaps he was in a great hurry or simply didn't know what wires he would need. Okay. Uh, that kind of would contradict this. If he didn't have the wires to hook it up. But maybe he had the wires at the other place. Son of the homeowners, Eric Elmer. Yeah, it was Tommy who stole it, I'm telling you. He's the poorest and greediest kid in our class. He doesn't even share his gum. Okay. So if there is gum there, it could be this guy. He always claims that his parents brought... Bought him the coolest video player, but of course, no one's seen it. So we were watching Bloody Shirt 4, and when we finished and everybody was going home, he sat down on the toilet. And while I was talking to the boys at the door, he had plenty of time to take the video player. He could have fit the whole scooter into that backpack of his. So he had a large backpack, enough to fit the video player, and apparently he doesn't even share his gum. So that could be a hint. I wasn't at home when the plumber came. I was with Barbara. This is the lady of the house. Our neighbor, helping with the baby. If you ask me, it's a good thing that video player is gone. Eric was spending too much time in front of the screen. I told him, no more strangers in the house. Let John fix everything himself from now on. Who knows what we'll get next. It's not a thief, it'll be a rapist. Okay, and then the homeowner, John. I think the VCR was stolen by the plumber who fixed the sink yesterday. He went on for a long time about Bloody Shirt 5, which he saw at his friend's house, and like a fool, I decided to brag about this new video player I bought last week. My son and his friends actually go to sleep 
staring at the screen. This plumber wagged his tongue about how he wants to save up money to buy one for himself. We talked a little more, and then the phone rang. I left the kitchen for 10 minutes to go to my office. The work won't wait, you know. That gave him enough time to find the video player, hide it in his bag, and go back to repairing the sink like nothing happened. He fixed the sink all right. I have no complaints there. And if he did steal my VCR, well, at least he didn't hit me over the head with it. So thanks for that. And Sharpwood, you can get hit in the head with less than that. It happens all the time. All right. So we're going to have to wait for more clues, but uh, it's like the little subtleties in here. I also don't know... Remember that first case that we did where we accused the wife? I don't know if that was right. I have no idea. Sense of security. John Elmer. Mr. Nash, it's good that your guys got started working on my investigation so soon. The cops in Sharpwood aren't as bad as everyone says. I'm not a poor man, but someone steals something from your home, and they steal the most valuable thing of all, your sense of security. Today they took your video player, tomorrow they'll take your wife by force, you know what I mean? I can't allow this, so I'm ready to do whatever it takes to bring them to justice. I have a small business for installing water supply systems in homes. In other words, we install toilets so homeowners don't have to do their business. This sounds like that uh, Bogdan guy that approached us when we were at our uh, hideout or whatever. If you put your best people on this case and solve the investigation, in return I'll install brand new toilets for all the cops in the area. Can't imagine how grateful the guys will be. Do you think they'll... They like to freeze their asses off outside, especially when it's late at night? Interesting. Whoa! Meradian was injured in a car accident. According to preliminary reports, it appears he was drunk. No doubt. <laughs> what the frick? Injured cops go to the hospital under the supervision of Dr. Canian. Okay, that's the guy we heard about earlier. He's a doctor. If a cop is killed on a mission, it's on you. But if a cop dies in the hospital, Lily will send you a replacement. After all, it's because the doctors couldn't save him. Interesting. Cool. So we have to spend five days in the hospital. One, two, three, four. Okay. So these little symbols, these little uh, lines on the outside, number of days. Gotcha. So Meradian, the drunk, I guess whenever we send him out, there's a risk that he's going to do that. I wonder if the other people could got hurt too. This is the illegal sales. Who wants to watch... Who wants some witch's moonshine? The old invalid is hawking his wares, shaking his crutch in the air. I'll turn any cripple into a man. People are gathered around, hoping for a taste. Um, take a swig from his bottle. Order him to close up shop with... I don't know if this is an intelligence or a negotiation uh, check here. Or restrain with probably strength. Right? Um, let's try to rest Let's Let's see how this works. That's a bad idea. I won't do it. What? You're just not. You're just not doing. What is that restriction, Clayton? All right, restrain him. Cop knocked the invalid down and put him in a patrol car while his customers griped and moaned. Now I'll have to sell his moonshine in the prison yard. So not only do we have cops that like won't come in for the next day, we have cops that just say like, "No, I'm not doing that." And I guess maybe with Clayton. Oh, we're gonna have to figure out exactly what type of orders he's gonna refuse. My god. My god. Clayt. Um, let's max out his strength. Atlas perk. Can carry a wounded ally or valuable cargo like he's dragging a weightless feather. Cool. This is really neat, man. Like, everything's kind of a surprise. I don't know... I really have no idea what to expect. Like... I'm a bit worried that I'm going to have, like, no cops on a day. Like, bad things are just going to go down, but that's probably part of it, you know? All right, November 23rd, end of day, done. We got two criminals arrested. I'll take it. We ignored some crimes and a criminal escaped, so we lose... Okay, I see how this is going down now. I see how this is going down. All right, now again, we could start saving for, for better people... I'm getting the impression that early on, we should just take these dudes, take the best that we can get, and fill our roster. Because if we can't send people out, that's a waste, you know? Um, so I'm going to take this Rockman dude. He's... I mean, yeah. We're going to take Rockman. Let's go. So now, uh, Rosencrantz come in tomorrow. Mustard come in tomorrow. Spurlock come in tomorrow. He's he took today off, right? He was supposed to come in, didn't come in. Rockman, uh, Muziaka, Kurosawa, 
That's six out of 12, but the others are so tired that they're going to be pretty much useless, right? So I should probably let them rest. I'm guessing. Not so bad. Not so bad. Okay, that's a couple of days down. Everyone's still alive. I'm starting to develop uh, some relationship with these guys. I know who I hate. <laughs> I don't know if I like any of them so far, but I know who's really annoying to deal with. Uh, Spurlock is one of them. And uh, that other guy there, the new guy, Clayton, who just like refused. Clayton's an ass. He's an ass. We're going to see how it goes. Anyways, we'll see you guys in the next day. Wish me luck. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>